today, as for two of the items, I have to withdraw. So we're, and then Councillor Fane will have to take the chair for that. So um, we will have to then appoint another vice chair for, for those two items. So for that, I've asked Councillor Wilson if she'd be willing to do that, which she's agreed. Uh, again, we need the committee's agreement for that. So just for those two items, which are items six and seven, can we take it by affirmation that Councillor Wilson sits in the vice chair for those two? Agreed. Thank you very much. Um, okay, just a few housekeeping rules then, please. Members in the chamber, can you just be reminded that everything on your desk, including your laptop screen, is likely to be broadcast at some point as we're on video, uh, as the camera follows the microphone being switched on. So councillors, councillors and officers are requested to wait a few seconds before speaking to allow the camera to catch up with you. Uh, and those participating in the meeting via the live stream, could you indicate that you wish to speak via the chat column? And please do not use the chat column for any other purposes than requesting to speak. Please make sure your device is fully charged and that you switch your microphone off unless invited to do so otherwise. Please ensure that you switched off or silenced any other devices that you have so they do not interrupt the proceedings. And as requested yesterday by email, please use a headset if available when speaking and hold the microphone close to your mouth. When you're invited to address the meeting, please make sure your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn your microphone off immediately. Speak slowly, clearly, and please do not talk over or interrupt anybody else. Uh, members, please note if we need to vote on any item, we should do so via the electronic system on the microphones. I believe everyone's well versed with this, but I'll run through the process again if and when we come to it. Um, so now, committee members in the chamber, I'll now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, could you please switch on your microphone, wait a few seconds, and then introduce yourselves. So as I mentioned earlier, my name's Councillor Henry Batchelor. I'm the, one of the members for Linton, and I'm sitting in the chair today. And could I ask Vice Chair Councillor Peter Fane to introduce himself? Peter Fane, Shelford Ward, uh, acting as Vice Chair today. Thank you. And I believe virtually we have Councillor Martin Khan. Martin, if you could switch on your video and microphone and introduce yourself, please. Uh -huh. Hello, I'm Councillor Martin Khan, uh, Member Fiston in Pinkton and Orchard Park. Thank you very much. And just for clarity, as you aren't in the chamber, you won't be able to vote on any item, but you are able to take part in debate. Councillor Claire Daunton, please. Uh, yes, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Claire Daunton, and I'm one of the members for the Fenditon and Forbourne Ward. Thank you very much. Councillor Jeff Harvey. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning. Yes, Jeff Harvey. I'm the member for Borsham Ward. Thank you. Councillor Dr. Tumi Hawkins. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Tumi Hawkins, and I am the member for Caldicott Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Judith Ripeth. Good morning, everyone. I represent um, Milton and Waterbeach Ward. Thank you very much. Councillor Deborah Roberts. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. I'm De Deborah Roberts, and I'm the District Councillor of Foxton Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sue Ellington. Good morning. I'm Councillor Sue Ellington, Swave Sue Ward, standing in for Heather Williams. Thank you very much. Councillor Dr Richard Williams. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm Richard Williams. I'm the member for Whittlesford, Triplo, Heathfield and Newton. Thank you very much. And finally, Councillor Eileen Wilson. Thank you, Chair. I'm Councillor Eileen Wilson. Um, member for Cotton Ward. Thank you very much. So I can confirm we have enough uh, to make the meeting core eight, so we will continue. Uh, and also at the top table with, uh, with myself and the vice chair, we have two officers who will be supporting the committee today. We have Mr. Chris Carter, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you, Chair. Morning, everybody. Chris Carter, Delivery Manager for Strategic Sites, supporting the committee today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Stephen Reid, if you could introduce yourself, please, with the microphone. Other button? There you go. Good morning, Chair and members. Thank you. And Stephen Reid's our senior planning lawyer, and he'll be advising the committee on any legal issues we may have. And I think virtually we also have Mr. Ian Senior, who will be clerking the meeting today. Ian, if you're there, could you switch on video and mic and say hello? Yes. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, members, if at any time a member leaves the meeting, would they please make that fact known so it can be recorded in the minutes? Um, as you've seen, Please. we have uh, probably one probably of the... 
as you see, we have probably one of the largest agendas, I think. Could everyone mute their mics, please, if they're online? Are you muted? Sorry, it's, it's the vice chair doing me, doing me over there. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, we have one of the largest agendas I think I've ever had at this council today. Um, albeit we have one, two, three, four items for decision today, members. So I'm, it's impossible to say how long the meeting will take, but I'll do my best to keep it moving. And obviously we'll be taking regular breaks. Um, we'll try and have a 15 minute break before lunch, a lunch break, and then if needed, another 15 minute break in the afternoon. So, but it will depend on where we are in the agenda or within an item at that point, but we will play it by ear, as it were. Okay, so with all the housekeeping rules out the way, we will now move on to item two on the agenda, which is apologies, Mr. Senior. Okay, apologies from uh, Councillor Pippa Halings and Councillor Heather Williams and their substitutes are Councillor Dr. Claire Daunton and Councillor Sue Ellington. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll then move on to item three, which is declarations of interest. So members, are there any interests that you need to declare relating to items on the agenda today? If you could indicate. I don't see any. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning, I have two. It's relating to items six and seven, which are both applications in Linton regarding the land north and south of Bartlow Road. Um, I have a pecuniary interest as my employer has an ongoing business relationship with the applicant. So as I have done with previous applications on this site, I will have to recuse myself and take no part in the debate or the vote, at which point Councillor Fane will take the chair for those two items. Okay, if there are no more declarations of interest, we'll move on to item four, the minutes of the previous meeting, which are held on the 27th of July and begin on page one of our agendas. Uh, members, are there any alterations or amendments that we need to make here? Please indicate if so. I'm not seeing any hands, so, oh, sorry. Councillor Harvey. Um, Microphone, please. Um, with the point of page one, I was a bit, I was a bit confused by the, the final paragraph. It says uh, the notes of the meeting on 14th, 20, uh, August 21, would be presented to the committee on, 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 on the session. Oh, yeah, of the bit, 11th of August. Bit of time traveling going on there. Um, uh, wasn't sure. Ian, can you throw any light onto that? Which, which is the wrong date there? So we're looking at page one, 4A, minutes of previous meeting. Uh, it says the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th would be presented at the meeting at the 11th, which is obviously impossible. Yes, that, that's a typo, Chair. Uh, 14th of July. Okay. I was thinking in terms of August because I think I was writing them in August. And there's also another place, it may be on the same page, where there seems to be a, an empty uh, paragraph B. Yes. Uh, that's, that's an additional uh, uh, carriage return that's been put in. Um, there is no B and C should be B, if okay. that makes sense. Understood. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so, thank you. So, full marks to Councillor Harvey for spotting that. Councillor Roberts. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think uh, I am at page one, the meeting of the 27th of July, I think I was there. Can that be double-checked? Or if, it, if I wasn't there, my apology apologies weren't made. Yeah, I think that was it, Chairman. I think I did actually apologise, um, but it's not been noted. Uh, are we looking at number number two on page one of the minutes? Councillors Judith Ripith and Deborah Roberts sent apologies for absence. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Agreed. We'll, we'll, we'll let you off, Councillor. Um, any other members, any other comments on the minutes? No. So with those amendments, can we all agree that we sign these as the correct records? Agreed? Thank you very much. So then we move on to the substantive business we have today. And item five, we have application 20 slash 05101 slash FUL, which is Long Stanton Land at the Retreat Fuse Lane. This is on page seven of our agendas. Um, the application is for erection of a bungalow with garage and associated infrastructure. Um, obviously, this is a 
it, we're not actually deciding this application today, we're just deciding the council's position as this application has been taken to appeal for non-determination. So just to make that abundantly clear at the start, and I'm sure the officers will clarify that as well, we're here to resolve the council's position at the appeal, as obviously we haven't made a position yet given there was no decision made on the application. Um, the applicant is Mr. Jerry Cadu of Lambert Homes. We have five material considerations which are in the agenda. Uh, the decision was due by the 5th of the 2nd, and the presenting officer is Mr. Lewis Tomlinson, who I'm hoping is on the line and can introduce the item for us. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen. Could someone just confirm they can see that, please? We can. Great, thank you. So the uh, site is land at the retreat, Hughes Lane, Don Stanton, and it's land to the rear of the retreat just here, as outlined by the red line. Hughes Lane comprises a single vehicle width gravel service track. The lane currently serves an access to a double garage serving 135 High Street and three other dwellings, the Willows, and two other recently constructed dwellings to the west of the retreat. So you've got the willows here and two further dwellings here. Here's aerial view. So again, you can see the willows is here and then two recently constructed dwellings. Um, the lane varies in width and the lane runs alongside a tree lined vegetated area to the north with boundaries to a number 135 and to the willows to the south side. A footpath, a public right of way, linking the home farm residential development to the south and west of Fuse Lane, with the high street merges onto the south side of Fuse Lane at a point to the immediate west of the Willows. The site lies within the village framework. To the immediate north of the site is a drainage ditch along here, um, which outfalls to Lonstanton Brook. The site is otherwise unconstrained. Just run through some photos. These may um, seem familiar because they were also shown on the recent section 73 on the adjacent site. So this is a few up Fuse Lane from access off the High Street. 135 High Street is on your left. The site in question is further down here. This is a view along the High Street past the frontage of Fuse Lane. So access to Fuse Lane is here. This is looking north. And you can um, note the traffic harming measures just here. Again, this is a view along High Street past the frontage of Fuse Lanes. Fuse Lanes here. This is looking south with Fuse Lane on the right. This is a view along High Street past the frontage of Fuse Lane, looking further south, taken from the entrance to Mitchcroft Road. Again, you can see traffic measure, traffic harming measures just here. This is the Fuse Lane entrance looking towards the north. Fuse Lane entrance looking towards the south. This is looking down Fuse Lane with garage to 135 High Street and the Willows on the left just here and the site in question is down here on the right. Looking down Fuse Lane again with the retreat on the right. So that's the retreat to be demolished and replaced with two dwellings here. The site we're looking at today is behind the retreat. You can see in the foreground as well, um, sorry, in the backgrounds, you've got two recently constructed dwellings. That's the informal turning head opposite the retreat. That's the access onto Fuse Lane from the public right of way to Home Farm. So this is just the existing site plan and the proposed site plan. So the application seeks consent for the erection of a chalet bungalow with a garage and associated infrastructure. It would contain four bedrooms. The application sets out that the proposed dwelling would mirror the recently constructed dwelling to the west known as the Elms with the same roof pitch and ridge height. So this is this dwelling here, the Elms, as you can see of a very similar design, scale and height. Um, it would have a similar, it would have a smaller footprint than the approved bungalow on the site and yet still provides four usable bedrooms, given the increase in garden size. 
the proposed dwelling would exceed the internal floor space policy requirement and would provide parking within the curtilage of the site and the ability to turn and leave the dwelling in forward gear. So just for some context, so as previously mentioned, these are the two recently constructed dwellings. This is where the retreat is currently, and there's two permissions on this site, one full application to demolish the retreat and replace it with two dwellings, and a subsequent section of 73 application that recently came to committee. The site that we're looking at today is this area to the rear. There's two um, live permissions on here, one allowed at appeal and one approved by the council. So the applicant has submitted an appeal to the planning inspector on the grounds of non-determination. As a result, the local planning authority no longer has the authority to determine the application. The local planning authority is required, however, to prepare a statement of case as part of the appeals process. This would set out its evaluation of the planning merits of the proposal. Given the history of the site, the application would have been referred to the planning committee for its determination had the appeal against non-determination not been made. Officers are therefore bringing the application to planning committee in order that members can express the committee's minded to decision that will form part of the statement of case. The council has secured an extension until Friday this week to submit its statement of case to allow members to consider this application today at committee. I'll just run through the proposed plans. So that's just a zoomed in version of the proposed site plan. As you can see, you've got parking within the site, a turning area, a garden here, and again, you can see a very similar design to the dwelling to the west. Proposed elevations. So as you can see, a chalet bungalow accommodation in the roof in the, in the form of dormers. So two front dormers and one rear dormer. Also note there's no first floor windows on the side elevations. So this is the proposed ground and first floor plan. So there's a number of updates. Um, members would have received an update report. Officers would like to point members towards that because it contains additional representations from Fuse Lane Consortium. And members should also note that Lon Stanton Parish Council has changed their position from support to object. Members will also be aware of a complaint letter from Lon Stanton Parish Council that related to the recent Section 73 application, which was for land to the front of the site. The response from Stephen Kelly to Lon Stanton Parish Council is available on the website. Further representations have been received from Fuse Lane Consortium since the update report was published, and these are also available on the website. These representations include correspondence between Fuse Lane Consortium and the local highway authority, which Fuse Lane Consortium have requested the local highway authority to explain or clarify the scope of its highway safety assessment. Officers have received and uploaded additional correspondence from the Cambridgeshire County Solicitor to Fuse Lane Consortium, producing a holding response. At lunchtime yesterday, officers were forwarded a highways engineer report by Create Consultant Engineering on behalf of Fuse Lane Consortium, which includes that any further development of Fuse Lane should not be permitted due to significant concerns relating to visibility um, and the site's existing access arrangements. The local highway authority late yes, yesterday afternoon provided a response to Create's assessment. The response from the local, local highway authority concludes that there's no substantive highway reasons to recommend that development be refused. All of this is uh, available on the website. I believe members have received emails with this information. We have received a large number of emails this morning raising concern about the potential for the removal and cutting back of hedges to enable inter-vehicle visibility displays and the lack of consultation about this. Dr John Finney from the Local Highway Authority will be available in committee today to answer any questions regarding the Local Highway Authority's response to the application and to create highway assessment. So officers have considered all other representations made by Fuse Lane Consortium and third parties over the course of the application. Officers do not consider any of those representations alter the recommendation or the primary reasons for reaching this recommendation. Officers recommend that the planning committee determines they would be minded to approve the application if it had the authority to do so, subject to the following conditions and informatives set out in the officer report. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Lewis. And members will have an opportunity to ask questions of clarity of the officer, um, but during the debate part of the of this item rather than at this current time. So thank you again for that presentation, Lewis. I'm sure we'll be coming back to you at some point. Um, members will now move on to... Hmm? Councillor Roberts. Councillor Roberts. A uh, matter of clarification, please. Um, probably to Mr Carter and Mr Reid. Um, obviously, in the cutting down of a forest to provide all this bump, um, I can't find anything on it. And seeing that we are not actually making a decision on the application, but actually what our stance would be legal-wise, um, can it be explained to me, have I missed somewhere in all this documentation any legal advice that um, the uh, District Council have um, attained from outside um, Council? Because even though it's telling me the world and its mother about all these past cases in the High Courts and things, uh, which are absolutely um, not pertinent to what's going on today, um, I can't see any information that leads me to understand what the position um, has been given to us where we stand by council. Um, you know, we will have taken council's advice and that I have no doubt whatsoever, but where is it? Probably best if our legal officer can give us an update on that one, if you may, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, as has been explained by Mr Tomlinson, um, we do not have jurisdiction to determine this application. You are simply being invited to comment on what you would have determined had it been within your jurisdiction. In those circumstances, I do not believe that it's uh, appropriate or relevant to raise questions of, of council. I'm sorry, I don't think it's for officers to tell members who are the decision makers what is relevant or relevant, not relevant to us to actually have at our disposal to understand. And then, as Mr Reid has just um, uh, confirmed and clarified, um, this is not a planning application anymore. This is about legal um, situations. Uh, and there is, in my opinion, absolutely no way that we can decide today um, to have a set position to argue legally um, if we have not, or if it can be argued by those in opposition to, to it all, that we have not actually, or the officers, have not actually briefed their members properly. If this was in Westminster and the bureaucrats hadn't briefed brief ministers, there would be hell on earth. And I would like to know, I'm being asked to stand my case up um, in a court of law, basically, and I do not know what this council's legal advice has been reference its position. Okay. I think just for absolute clarity, it might be worth a, a firm legal opinion on that, please. Chair, if I may, uh, this committee does not have jurisdiction to determine this application. That's the legal advice. Okay. Members, that's the legal advice we have. Well, it is We've legal been... advice, is it? It's, it's mm. filibustering. It's, you know, it's Members, we are. Uh, do you want to come in, please? Thank, Chris you, thank you, Chair. D just if it's helpful, um, it is true to say that whatever decision we make today is, is not going to determine the planning application. That now rests with the planning inspectorate. I think what we would like the committee to be able to do is to resolve what its position would be at that appeal so that we can put the ca best case forward for the council based all, on all the information that we have available. And clearly, there's a lot of information available, uh, including the late representation summarised by Lewis Tomlinson. Um, so I think that's, that's the position. Uh, I, I concur with Stephen Reid that this council isn't determining the planning application. That is a matter for the planning inspectorate now. But what we want to be able to do is to put forward the council's position. So, so officers are basically refusing to give me, a member, um, the information that I require to make a very serious um, decision um, on what is going to be a legal case fighting. I find that intolerable and absolutely unacceptable. You are not in charge, though I think often you think you are, but actually it's members who are the decision makers. Chair, if I may, please. I'm sorry to repeat myself. Um, members are not making a decision today. 
and therefore officers are not withholding information that is material to any decision being made today. Okay, let me just put this on record now. I will now be requesting through uh, the proper process, and I know it will be privileged information, however, you will be getting a, a, a request from me that I want to um, be sent and, or receive all the legal advice that this council has received from outside sources on its position. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Well, that is obviously your right to do that, and that's up to officers to send that over, but we've had legal advice. We can continue today. Um, I haven't heard any motions for, for deferral, so I'm proceeding with this application. Um, we'll then move on to public speakers, please. And I think the first one we have is from Mr. Daniel Fulton, who I believe is with us today in the chamber. Mr. Fulton. Yes, uh, thank you. I understand Dr. Finney is here. Um, I'm not going to speak first until officers have presented their case. Um, you have to follow your own procedures. So I will wait here for Dr. Finney to uh, make his arguments. Yeah, Mr. Fault and Dr. Finney's here to answer questions, not to put any case forward, I'm afraid. This uh, is your opportunity to put your case forward for objection. I would respectfully invite the chair to ask members uh, if they have any questions for Dr. Finney in regards to the removal of trees in Long Stanton and if the chair would be willing to put that question to members of the committee, and if members have no questions, I would then be happy to proceed. No, you, the, the process is you proceed first, and if members have any questions for officers during the debate, that is their opportunity to ask. If you want to put your case forward now, this is your opportunity. So, chair, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, but I think there is a point here that, you know, in four hours yesterday afternoon, we, we got um, this apparent decision from the Highways Authority saying they wanted to cut the, the trees back. It asserts there's substantial overgrowth on the highway. I, I, I very much doubt a site visit was carried out in four hours. Um, and that's very important, actually, to um, this um, application. So I think we do need to hear something about that from somebody, if not officers, from Mr Finney. But that is quite crucial. Okay, my, my view would be that we hear from public speakers first and then we hear from technical advisors. But if you bear with me, I will just ask officers' opinion. Okay, so I'm going to proceed as we usually do where we take public speakers first and then we can ask any questions of technical officers who are joining us to support the committee at, during the debate. So, Mr. Chairman, Fulton. I'm, I'm sorry, and this is turning into a very messy morning already, and I'm very sorry to be feeling it so angry so early in the day. However, it's quite clear that very uh, important information has suddenly appeared um, in the public domain and in members' domain, um, which gives a completely different perspective as, as about the access visibility on the lane, and how come um, it has suddenly um, come forward in this manner? I mean, I think the members of the public would, could be forgiven to saying um, it looks underhand. Um, and, you know, the members of the public seemingly, generally in Long Stanton, don't know about this, or haven't had an opportunity themselves to make any representation. And here again, we're not, we're not having the advice, we're not getting, and, and you know, senior members of this committee don't seem willing to give us that advice when we are going to be expected to have input into what our case is going to be uh, and how it can stand up. Now, you know, it's always the case that we try and get the information in before we start to um, decide about it. And also, I think in all fairness to Long Stanton residents, you know, large and small, and the whole lot of them are just a few of them, I think it's important that they are, have an opportunity to listen this morning to what the County Council's stance is now and why this sudden change and this cutting down of, of large areas of hedgerows, because that may actually um, make a difference to, uh, say, Mr. Uh, Mr. 
um, Fulton's uh, representation to us. You know, this is not open and transparent government. And, you know, we are supposed to listen to our residents. Yeah. And I think it's our, our residents' right to know the full story before we then start debating it properly, including um, the Fuse Lane Consortium. You. you know, all too often, over the last few years, I think that Fuse Lane and long-standing residents have been treated very badly. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hawkins, do you wish to contribute? Thank you, Chair. I think, uh, I don't know why there's a fuss being made this way, because we are following normal process that we normally follow. We have always, can I please finish? I didn't interrupt your tirade. Now, we have always followed a process. And that process is, we have the case officer present the case to us. We then have public speakers come forward and say what they need to say to us. We then ask them questions of clarification. And then we go into the debate at which point any and all the third party um, uh, officers who are party to the uh, application, we then call on them to give us their information and their reasoning. We get all the time, we do get updates at the last minute. And none of that time have we had this debate on take it now, take it not. We need to follow a process. We have a process. Let's follow that process, please. We were told very categorically by the chairman that Mr. Fiddy is here, is present, to answer our questions. Why, why don't you yes. want Mr. Fiddy to be able to at answer the our right questions? Time, at the right time in the process. Well, this is Councillor right. Roberts, at I, the right okay, time in the process. Can we bossy. take a step back, please, for a second, please? We, we have a process for hearing applications. The case officer presents the case. We hear from public speakers, and then officers support the committee with their advice during the debate. I'm not proposing to deviate from that at all, and I, I would like to carry on with this process, please. So I'm going to invite Mr. Fulton again, if he would like to put his objections okay. forward. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, just, just to add a, a constructive potentially constructive suggestion. Could I move that we do slightly depart from our normal procedure and we go back to the old procedure for this, where we have questions of clarification to the officer now, and the reasoning for that is that this is a different sort of application, because yesterday we were given some very important information in the afternoon. Uh, it wasn't in the officer's report. We haven't had time uh, to read it um, thoroughly, and this is therefore an unusual application, and therefore I think would merit an unusual procedure just for this one application. So I would move that motion. I don't know if anybody wishes I'll to second, second it. it. It's a motion to move, so we have... Okay, we have so we have a motion... Deborah Robertson second. Thank you. So we have a motion moved to allow questions of clarity of case officers at this stage from Councillor Richard Williams, which has been seconded by Deborah Roberts. Uh, do we need any debate on this particular item? I know we've heard one opinion from Councillor Hawkins. Does anyone else wish to add to this debate? We do not, so we'll have to go to a vote on this, please. Uh, Aaron, are you able to set this up on the keypads? So members voting, you need to press the blue button to register, and then if you're in favor, you press green. If you're not, you press red, or if you wish to abstain, you press yellow. So we're, we're voting on the motion to revert back to the previous process, whereby we can ask questions of clarity of officers at this stage, rather than during the debate. So if you're in agreement, you vote green for yes. If you're not... Okay, we'll just. Okay. It looks as if the <laughs> the voting is reset. So members, apologies if we could go through the voting process again. So bl blue button to register, green if we're in favour of reverting to the previous um, previous way of working, or red if we do not, and obviously yellow if you wish to abstain. 
We're, it's okay, everyone, for final clarity, we're voting on whether uh, to revert back to the old process of being able to ask officers questions of clarity at this stage rather than during the debate. If you're in favor of reverting, you press green. If not, you press red. Or if you wish to abstain, you press yellow. Okay. Okay, so I believe we have all the votes in. And we have three in favor, seven against, so that motion has fallen. Thank you very much, Aaron. If you could take that off our screens. So we'll proceed as originally intended, and we'll go back again to Mr. Fulton, please, if you would uh, like to give your three minutes worth of objections to yes. me, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll start out by making reference to the statement of community involvement, um, which was adopted by this council in 2019. Um, and which is legally binding in law um, on this council. Part four of the Statement of Community Involvement um, requires that representations made on planning applications are considered by the decision makers before the decision is made. Um, it also requires that representations are published uh, in the application file on the council's website. It's highly unusual to see a, a major change to a proposal, such as the local highway authority proposing cutting down two 43 by 2.4 meter triangles on each the north and south side of, of High Street, of the Fuse Lane in High Street. Um, just today, this morning, um, I believe over 12 representations have been received. Um, keep in mind this information from the local highway authority only came out yesterday evening. Um, of the representations received today, they include the Campaign for the Protection of Rural England, Living Streets Cambridge, the Chair of the Federation of Cambridge Residents Associations. They include multiple residents of Fuse Lane, multiple residents of Mitch Croft Road, Hedden House in Longstanton, High Street in Longstanton, um, and another of uh, other individuals from um, other places in the community. Have any members of the committee seen these representations, which you were legally obliged to take into account, unless the council's position is that the statement of community involvement no longer applies because this is an appeal. If you're not willing to listen to local residents on a legal technicality, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I mean,
To test your call quality, record a short message after the beep. Then your message will be played back to you. Members, by way of an update, um, still ongoing issues with the live stream, but the engineer is confident we can get going by at least half, sorry, by the latest half 11. So I'm going into the final 15 minute adjournment to a half 11. If the issues aren't resolved by then, we'll have to abandon the meeting. But the engineers are confident we should be able to get up and running. So, yep, yeah, by way of an update. So we are still in adjournment. Thank you.
Members, can we take our seats? Thank you very much. So, members, unfortunately, we're at half 11 now, and the 